personally, I would like to see more limitations on the equipment as far as the way kayaks could be rigged out, especially the electronic technology part of it. So I see that these kayaks anymore morphing into these high-tech machines that get away from like what the basic foundational principle of fishing out of a kayak is. Some guys use like, you know, 10 rods in them. They got high-tech trolling motors. There's guys that have live scope on them. I've seen several kayaks that have three, de three electronic units on it. I just got my ass kicked out on the lake and I feel like it's time to talk about something. A video I watched the other day, I just shared a few clips from it with you. And you guys are probably familiar with Randy Blokett. If you're not, his videos will probably be popping up on your feed before too long. We're gonna talk about, I'm gonna get into three to four reasons why I believe Randy is creating segregation, not only in the fishing industry, but now he's targeting the kayak fishing industry. And this is something that holds near and dear to my heart. I love kayak fishing. So let's get into the reasons why I believe Randy is causing segregation. Number one, he's trying to limit tournament anglers on what they can and can't have on their kayaks. What Randy doesn't understand is there's more to tournament fishing in a kayak than just a live tournament. You can get in a monthly tournament. It lasts all month. They set them up differently. It could be a three fish. It could be a one fish. It could be a five fish, but it gives you all month to tournament fish. Do you need forward facing sonar? Do you need side scan? Do you need down, down scan? No, you need a kayak, a rod and reel, some lures and a catch board. But any average Joe can get into tournament fishing in a kayak. So that's where Randy's got it wrong, number one. Number two, I believe he's trying to segregate the average Joe, everyday blue collar, white collar man or woman that is getting into kayak fishing. He's trying to turn us against each other because one guy may have a nicer setup than the other, and it may not necessarily be nicer, but it's how he wants it set up. I've bought multiple kayaks over the last few years. I started in a cheap Dunham's $150 Pelican sit in style, and that's what made me fall in love with kayak fishing. Since then, I've evolved. I want a more comfortable experience. I want a safer experience. So I have evolved in fishing kayaks and I'm still looking for that perfect kayak. The one I'm in now is awesome. Is it the perfect fishing kayak? No, but I'm setting it up to my standard, how I want to fish out of it. And there's no reason I don't, I can't go fish with a guy in a sit-in style or a sit-on style or a motor driven. He's creating segregation within the kayak fishing industry between us all. Whether he likes it or sees it or not, He's doing it. And I don't know if he gets off on that or what it is, but this dude creates a lot of segregation in the fishing industry. It doesn't matter what type of kayak you have. As long as you're out on it and fishing, that's all that matters. The other issue that I feel like he's created that's that's causing segregation is he's giving like tricked out kayaks a bad name or a bad rap. Like it's like it's a bad thing to have a tricked out kayak. Like you work your ass off for what you have whether you worked your ass off on social media and got sponsorships or you work your ass off on your everyday job and got enough money saved up to deck out a kayak, how you want to deck it out, it should not matter to me, to Randy, to my buddy Brian, to Darius, to anybody, how a guy has his kayak set up because it was his decision to do it that way. That's how he wants to fish and that's how he's going to do it. So if I go out with a dude that's just got a sit-in style, I'm not going to turn my nose up to him because he's not in the, the latest and greatest fishing kayak. Real quick reminder, guys, be sure to join our Facebook group, Kayak Fishing Dads on Facebook. If you're on it, one of the fastest growing Facebook pages on the social media app, find it, search it, Kayak Fishing Dads, join in on the conversation. I'm just happy that we're all out there in our own setups and fishing together as a group and having that bond as kayak anglers out on the water. And another thing Randy doesn't understand, I guess, is kayaks these days um, are almost coming standard issue with motors, man. I mean, or it's a it's another option to add it to it. And they're coming set up to be able to quickly attach a trolling motor setup or, a, you know, one of them MK 180s, those type of motors, the Tokitos. All these kayaks nowadays, it's becoming a standard to have a motor. And just because... A guy decides to put his hard-earned money into getting one. 
doesn't make it any worse or better for the industry. If anything, it's advancing the industry. It may get more people involved in it. But Randy doesn't think it's a good idea to have a kayak to be able to go out and go on plane or a dude to have 10 rods and reels. Like, so you can have 10, 15, 20 rods and reels in your bass boat, but I can't have eight to 10 rod and reel setups on my kayak. And another reason he's creating segregation is, uh, again, is what this video is mainly about is electronics, specifically forward-facing sonar. Forward-facing sonar is not the end-all, be-all you're now a professional angler. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I've been fishing with it and I've had great days today, got my ass kicked. What I believe to be the most underutilized and underrated electronic on your fishing boat or fishing kayak is gonna be side scan technology. The ability to go across the lake at a, you know, an idling speed, one, two, three mile an hour, call it, and to be able to scan the bottom of the lake, let's call it 80 feet each way. So you're making a 160 foot path from the center of your boat to, to scan for structure, scan for fish, scan for drop-offs. I believe that is the most underutilized electronic in the fishing industry. Now the pros utilize it. And you'll see that when you watch guys like Milliken and stuff, when they go around side scanning and scanning the entire lake offshore, onshore, ledges, all that. It's because they know it's one of the most important pieces of the puzzle, but there's a lot of guys that don't utilize it. And I, I used to be one of those guys, but I utilize it every time I'm out on the lake now. So my message to you, Randy, is if you're gonna die on the hill of forward-facing sonar, you need to step up your game and die on the hill of banning all electronics on any fishing boat in general in fishing tournaments, because that's what you want. And I guarantee you, you use side scan technology to map out lakes. And that is the most important underrated electronic on the boat that will catch you more fish than forward facing sonar ever will.